Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Edgewater Alliance Church. It's great to see everybody. Please stand, and we're going to sing in a minute. God is good all the time. All the time. And all the time, God is good. God is good. Let's sing that together today. Well, good morning. You're awake. We're ready to go, right? Thanks for coming to Edgewater Alliance Church. We're so grateful to have you here in this space with us this morning and uh, grateful to be just gathered together. Regardless of any events that have happened to this point in your week, we hold on to the truth 
that God is good. And, uh, and we're thankful for that this morning and, and we can rest on that. Again, if you're uh, new to Edgewater Alliance Church, you're still figuring out your journey with Jesus. We're so thankful and privileged to have you in our gathering this morning. We'd love to connect with you. And if you've been here for a little bit and you're looking to grow a little bit deeper to see how can I get some more community and, and some people to walk along uh, this journey of life with, uh, there's a little QR code on the seat back in front of you. We also have some greeters and ushers out in the lobby. We'd love to help you make that next step, whether it's uh, a Bible study, whether it's serving with us somewhere, whether it's jumping in to a missional community, we would love to, to help you uh, take those next steps. So please make uh, sure you jump into that. Wanted to take a moment to highlight a really special thing coming up here at Edgewater Alliance Church. At the end of September, we're doing something called the Marriage Tune-Up. And so uh, twice a year, Edgewater Alliance Church, we're going to be doing two what we call all-church forums, which are uh, kind of bigger events that we'll do to hopefully help all of us in, grow in our faith. And, uh, and this is no slight against single people. If anything, it's us married people saying we need help. And, uh, and that's, that's an okay thing to admit. And so... We're calling it the marriage tune-up. I think, uh, hopefully, the name uh, lends well to what we're trying to do. That in the same way that you wouldn't go without exercising for 10 years, or that you wouldn't change the oil in your car for a decade, we want to make sure that every marriage needs a tune-up, and that we all could use some help to better serve, to better love, to better care for our spouse. And so, this really is for anyone at any age or stage in uh, the marriage relationship. So, if you're engaged, if you've been married for a few years, if you've been married for a long time. We really want to make space for everyone to be there. It costs $20 a couple uh, that covers food and child care for both uh, Friday evening and Saturday morning. So if you got littles, we want to make sure that that's taken care of for you as well. And we're really looking forward uh, to being here. Uh, we have a couple that works with uh, a group called Windshape that does some marriage retreats. And they're coming in uh, to, to speak and share with us and to be very interactive. We're really looking forward to it. Uh, especially if you are uh, a couple that might have a few more uh, years under your belt and you're thinking, hey, we're, we're really rocking with this thing. We want to make sure that you feel like you can come as well, not just for you to get the tune-up, but one thing we'd love to see come from an event like this is that we could pair you with maybe some younger married couples to see if there's some mentoring relationships that can develop. And uh, I know my wife and I, we already have it marked on our calendar. We're not coming. I'm not coming uh, as like the pastor hosting it or coming to do anything. We are participants in the event because we're saying, hey, we really want to be there. One other thing to, to throw out, we really believe that this could also be a super cool evangelistic tool that you could use. So if there's a couple that you know in your neighborhood, some family friends you have, whoever it is, to say, hey, we're going to this marriage event. We'd love for you to come with us, come join us. And we think we could use it in a lot of cool ways. So that's coming up at the end of September. Uh, one last thing we want to mention this morning before we welcome in some new members. Uh, we have a group called Moms in Prayer that have started a meeting. They meet on Wednesday nights. I get so much joy from this group because while we're meeting uh, with our youth group and while our kids stuff is happening on Wednesday nights, which kicked off this last, this last Wednesday, they're in a room praying for us, praying for not just what's happening here on our campus, but praying for our students, praying for our families, praying for our kids. And so if you want to jump into that, we would love to have you in that. One other thing we're doing with our family ministry this year is that we made up some prayer cards. And so we want to make sure that every family in the church that has kids in our family ministry is being prayed for. So if you would like to be a prayer partner, just see me or Eleanor. We'll get you a little card. You can put it in your Bible, stick it on your fridge, put it somewhere where you can be reminded uh, to pray. So we're going to welcome in two, uh, just one new member this morning. What we had, sorry, I'm getting mixed up. We had two first service, one second service. So if you see your name on the screen, come on down, Mr. Joseph Aquino. Come on, Joe. Did that feel like the price is right? I was going for it. I was going for it. So thanks, Joe. Well, uh, we're here to welcome Joe into membership this morning. Uh, membership here at Edgewater Alliance Church, uh, unfortunately, doesn't mean that you get a better parking spot, although I know some of you are angling for that. Uh, it doesn't give you a percentage off on your credit score or anything like that. Uh, what it means is that we are welcoming you into our group, not just to say we're glad that you're here worshiping with us on a Sunday morning, but you're saying uh, for whatever reason, God has placed you here in this local expression of the church. And you're coming alongside to say that not only are we going to be about being community with one another, but that we're going to serve together in some various ways and do what we can to build up 
Jesus Christ and his kingdom wherever we live, work, and play, and that you're willing to do that with us together. Amen. Amen. So we're so glad. Yeah, so glad that you're here. We gave Joe a Bible, and uh, if you're familiar with what we do at EAC, is this Bible for him? No. It's not for you. So when you become a member, well, that was a good hearty no. That was yeah. good. Yeah, I don't know if you guys, if you came really wanting to say no this morning, but uh, say yes to Jesus. No, anyway, so... Um, but with that Bible, Joe, we want you to be prayerful to say who is a person in your life that you can give that Bible to yes. that can start up maybe a gospel conversation or a conversation. He's already ready to go. Who, who is it? My grandson. Grandson. All right. What's grandson's name? Rodney. Rodney. All right. We're going to pray for Rodney in a minute here, and uh, we'll pray for Joe in our service. So join me in prayer this morning. Jesus, thank you so much for my brother Joe here. God, thank you for his heart. Lord, thank you that um, God, he's already has a heart that, that's willing to say uh, to his grandson, hey, you know, let, let's... Let me give you this Bible and have this conversation. So we pray for him. We pray for that moment they have together. God, would you move in, in a powerful way there? God, thank you for those that, that have decided that, uh, hey, EAC is our home and we want to do mission together. And so, God, we, we, um, we align ourselves with you, Jesus. Lord, would you move powerfully uh, in this service? Holy Spirit, have your way. God, move in the music, move in the words from uh, Pastor Tyler. God, we're so grateful to have you in this place, God, to have your love for us. And, and it's in your great name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Right, congratulations. Please stand as we continue our worship. It is good to give our thanks and praise to the Lord. Tiffany's going to lead this one. Two, three.
God's faithfulness is referenced many, many times in scripture. One favorite is Psalm 105, where we read, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's sing this beloved hymn together as Paul Michael leads. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, This next song is a retelling of the old hymn, Oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing, by Charles Wesley, written on the anniversary of his conversion. So sing with us. I think you'll like this retelling. Yeah. 
Please be seated. Amen and good morning, church family. Who's thankful to be in God's house today? Amen. Well, I am grateful that he woke me up this morning, and I gotta tell you, there is no place in the world I'd rather be than right here with each and every one of you. So praise God that we're here this morning. Uh, my name is Tyler Peacock. For those of you that don't know, I have the pleasure of being the church planter in residency here at Edgewater Alliance Church. What that means is that I get to serve on your pastoral staff for the next 12 months or so, and Lord willing, at the end of 2024, my lovely wife Mary and I will plant a new congregation here in the region. Now, last time I was up here, I told you in that vein that uh, as soon as I knew more information about that, you would know. So I'm happy to announce this morning that we have a pretty big announcement. We've landed on a name. And so uh, I know the support has just been overwhelming. You guys have been praying, and I've had many wonderful conversations. Uh, just, I, I can't even tell you how much it blesses my heart, the love and support that we've received from this church family. So without further ado, I'm gonna give you that name this morning, then we'll dive right into our message. The name of the new church is Relationship Alliance Church. Yep. Amen. And that spawns from the belief that your relationship with Jesus Christ is far more important than any religious experience I as a pastor could ever want to offer you. And so that is where, that is where we are heading. So if you guys could continue to pray for that, uh, be intentional with your prayers, pray for the lost that are gonna be found and led to Christ through this wonderful body of believers. Um, we are just excited and over the moon. So we appreciate you, we love you, and uh, without further ado, I'm gonna pray for our service and we'll jump right in. Father, I thank you for the gathering this morning. Lord, I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. Lord, I thank you for the message that you have prepared for us this morning. Uh, I pray that the Holy Spirit would come and fill this place. I believe you are already here in our wonderful time of worship, but I pray that you would anoint the words as they come out of my mouth and soften the hearts to receive them, Lord, and may you minister in a special way this morning to each and every person under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. All right, so last week, Pastor Connor led us in a wonderful message on wisdom versus wisdom. So he talked about what it means, but the tension between wisdom from above and wisdom from below. We learned how sometimes in this life, actually quite often, things are packaged as authentic, and then when we dig a little bit deeper, it's very quickly revealed that they're fake. If anybody remembers the Rolex story, I know I was laughing the whole way home. So this week, we're gonna go a little bit deeper into that tension, and we're gonna look at what happens when that carnal wisdom, that wisdom from down below, that unauthentic wisdom finds its way into the body of believers. This week, we're going to discuss wisdom versus worldliness. And so if you have your Bible with you this morning, we're gonna pick up in James chapter four, right on verse one. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. You adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again, if you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Do you think that the scriptures have no meaning? They say that God is passionate, that the spirit he has placed within us should be faithful to him. And he gives grace generously. As the scriptures say, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Amen. Some heavy stuff. 
coming from James, right? At one point, calling his recipients adulterers. But James is writing this from a place of authority, almost as if you were receiving a letter from one of your pastors, right? But as I prepared for our message this morning, I couldn't help but see James almost speaking as if he was a physician. You see, James first assesses the symptoms. He says, your body is sick. So what are the symptoms? He calls out quarrels and fights, scheming and killing to get what you want, fighting and waging war to take from others, unanswered prayers, friendship with the world. Those are all pretty serious symptoms. And at first glance, we might even think without any context that James is writing to the emperor of Rome. Not a well-established body of believers. I mean, surely a body of believers never has any of these problems, right? But we also see James assess the source of those symptoms. He calls out their evil desires, their wrong motives, jealousy, greed, their carnal pleasures. That's the unauthentic wisdom, the fake Rolex packaged as authentic that we learned about last week. And it's all stemming from the sad attempt of the body of believers to balance faith and worldliness. I mean, James makes it pretty clear in verse four where he says, you adulterers. That language, adulterers, is heavy. These are, this is a reference to the Old Testament Israel where the people would run after God when they were in a time of trouble, but then they would so quickly forget all the blessings that God had brought to them in their trials as soon as everything was going right. They were spiritual adulterers seeking just to find what was next. So he's referencing this and he says, don't you realize that your friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I don't know about you, but I'm not trying to be an enemy of God this morning. And he says, I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Now I am glad that in 2023, Edgewater, Florida, we no longer have to feel that tension, right? Yeah, no, <laughs> that is absolutely incorrect. We feel that tension more so now, in my opinion, than ever before. We see it in our youth, our young adults, they're coming up and they're just dealing with all these things, all this worldliness all around us, trying to speak into our lives and be louder than God's Holy Spirit. Everywhere you turn, no matter where you look, you don't have to go far, whether it's social media, uh, any, any kind of media in general. You know, I'd be as bold to say that we live currently in one of the hardest times to be a follower of Christ, short of the persecuted early church. The only difference there is it's no longer, at least in America, bold persecution. It's an under the breath whisper where it tries to sneak into your family with this unauthentic wisdom. You know, I've said it before the last time I was up here and I, I will continue to say it. This is a fight. The Christian life is a fight. It always has been, it always will be because when you are going against the grain, when you are going against culture, that tension grows so much more, amen? And we see it, we hear it, we feel it. You know, we live in a time where, we live in a time where there's a hustle culture. How many of you in the room have heard that term? This hustle culture is all throughout our youth and young adults. They're telling our kids to, to push harder, go faster, work longer, even lose sleep so that you can get the upper hand on the competition. You know, but I don't serve the world. I serve God. And the world may say, hustle, work hard, play hard, and boast about it. But God's word says humility. 
God says, be content in all you have and do not brag. You know, the world says, greed. Take everything you can and hold on to it as long as possible. But the word of my God says generosity. Give sacrificially from a joyful heart, even when it hurts. The world says to tear each other down to get ahead. But our God says to build each other up for the glory of God. Can you feel the tension yet? Anywhere you look, you're gonna see this tension pulling you back and forth. And God doesn't call us to partiality on this matter. And James doesn't leave us hanging without a prescription for our diagnosis. So he says, your body is sick. Your lives are sick. Here are your symptoms and here's what is causing them. But praise God that James is gonna tell us how to fix it. So verse seven, and this morning, if you see anything in yellow and bold, I want you to read it with me because I really want us to grasp this this morning so that we know how to fight this tension. So verse seven, so humble yourselves before God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. First step is to humble ourselves. Before we can ever hope to stand against the enemy, we've gotta bring everything before the Lord. Humble ourselves before the Lord. The Life Application Study Bible notes this. Humbling ourselves means recognizing that our worth comes from God alone. To be humble involves working with his power according to his guidance, not with our own independent effort. Although we do not deserve God's favor, he reaches out to us in love and gives us worth and dignity despite our human shortcomings. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You know, we cannot stand a chance against the enemy unless we realize these truths right here. We don't deserve anything from God. We are all fallen people in need of a savior, but we serve a gracious God. We believe in a gracious God who gives us worth and dignity despite that fact. And even once we accept this, can I tell you, I hope it's not a surprise this morning, but it's still not easy. It is still not easy, even once you have humbled yourself before the Lord, to resist the devil. You know, I've, I've had the immense honor of walking with many of you through trials over the last two years in my time here at Edgewater Alliance Church. And I can tell you that 90% of those moments are filled with tears on both sides. You don't cry when it's easy. In fact, the Apostle Paul writes in Romans 7 about how uneasy it is. He says, I love God's law with all my heart. But there's another power, where? Within me, that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still, where? Within me. Oh, what a miserable person am I. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death. Mm. Who knows the answer in the house this morning? The answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. Is that ringing home with anyone this morning? So back to our prescription. James continues in verse eight. He says, come close to God and God will come close to you. 
Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. We're going back to that adulterer statement that James made just a few moments ago. This division is not what God wants. You see, he says, your, your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up in honor. Mm. You know, we see again and again throughout scripture this theme of giving your entire life to God, your entire heart, no partiality. We've heard it, lukewarm Christianity, there's all, we hear it consistently. And we hear it again here with James. God does not want a portion of your heart. He doesn't want a percentage. He wants your whole person. You know, many of us here know that we serve a God who doesn't care what's going on on the outside. We can probably piece ourselves together, come to church on a Sunday morning and convince everyone in this room that we've got it all together, right? If we're being honest, I think each one of us has had a Sunday where we've had to kind of bandage ourselves up, tape ourselves up and come to church. I pray that's not you this morning, but we serve a God who knows our inner being and that's what he's after. In fact, in 1 Samuel, when God is choosing David to be king, one of the greatest kings of all time, he tells Samuel this as he goes over, he looks at David's brother, the big strong one. And this is what God says. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance but the Lord looks at what? The heart. That's right. And this language that we hear from James, this washing and purifying is a reference to Old Testament. This is for purity where the priest would have to wash in a brass basin before they could even come into the presence of the Lord or they would die. You know, the ESV study Bible notes this about James recipients. It says, laughter shows how casually James's readers were treating their sin. The only proper reaction to God's impending judgment is to be wretched and mourn and weep, as is seen often in the Old Testament. We don't have to look far in today's society to see this blatant disregard for sin, this laughter And our final piece of our prescription from James comes in verse 11. Don't speak evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize and judge each other, then you are criticizing and judging God's law. But your job is to obey the law, not to judge whether it applies to you. God alone, who gave the law, is the judge. He alone has the power to save or to destroy. So what right do you have to judge your neighbor? There's some conviction on the end of that prescription, amen? You know, the clear command from James here is to stop tearing each other down. Stop judging one another's righteousness. You know, in Christian culture, I think there's this tendency, we, we have our tool belt, right? We have the word of God, we have our prayer life, but there's this one hidden tool that we keep in the back here, and I'm not a fan of it. It's a measuring tape of righteousness. And we like to pull it out, and we like to hold it up to everybody, except for ourselves. When it comes time to hold that righteousness measuring tape up to ourselves, that's when we're like, oh, it's broken. I, I lost it. 
But Jesus says in Matthew 22 to love God and neighbor. And the apostle Paul says in Romans 13 that love satisfies the law of God. Just looking at our text today and those two additional verses, we can figure out that if we are not loving one another and honoring one another, we're breaking God's law. And I can only imagine breaking his heart as well. You know, it's not our job to judge or police anyone. It's our job as ambassadors of heaven here on earth to love as God first loved us. Humbling ourselves so that we stand a chance in resisting the devil and giving our hearts over to God in all that we do. I told you it was heavy stuff at the beginning. We saw the diagnosis. Your body is sick. You have quarrels, fights, wars, stealing, tearing each other down because of your greed, your jealousy. You know, I'm blessed to be a part of a church family where this stuff is minimal. But when we take it and zoom out and we look in the bigger context, this is what we're up against. These are the motives that people are experiencing. And when we, when we open our hearts to the lost that are just over the curb outside, this is what they're walking in. This is what they're dealing with. And ultimately what we have to pray and stand against. And that's what James is calling us to here. So as we prepare to go forward in the rest of our week, I want you to ask yourselves these three simple questions and listen to what the Holy Spirit has to say. You may not ask yourself these things now. You may ask yourself on the car ride home in your devotion time tonight, but be honest. Open your heart to the Lord and hear what he would have to say. First, have you given your entire heart to God? Are you on the fence Second, are you someone who builds up for the glory of God or are you someone who tears down to get ahead? And finally, is there an area of your life where you're holding on to worldliness or wrong motivations? You know, as I ask these questions, I'm reminded of a story or a conversation rather that I had with my grandfather right before he passed. As many of you know, I didn't grow up with a large gospel presence in my life. There weren't many believers of Jesus that were speaking into me, but this man was one of the few. And a few years ago, as I was starting to get into ministry, beginning to lead people, I was hosting a small group, doing all these things and taking ground for the kingdom. A motivated young man had just preached the word for the first time and I'm with my grandfather and he's, he's drawing near to the end, which we all knew was coming and we're having a conversation and I'm telling him all these great things that God is doing in and through my family. And he stops and he looks at me and goes, son, I'm gonna tell you something. God doesn't need you. Can I tell you? That hurt. I didn't understand it. It checked me to the point that I'll never forget it so long as I live. And as I think he intended, I sat there for a moment in my offense with my ego battered in my arms. And then he stops and he goes, son, God doesn't need you, but he wants you. And he's called you. So never forget that he doesn't need you. And I think if we're trying to remember that, this is an easy way for us to remember it as we go forward. God wants your heart, not your hustle. I'm gonna pray for us. Father, I thank you for this morning. Lord, I thank you that your love for us is not based on our performance. Lord, I thank you that your gifting and your Holy Spirit dwelling within us is not something that we can mess up. 
God, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice as we struggle with this tension between culture and the attacks of the enemy. Lord, I pray that you would anoint us to go forward being ambassadors for heaven here on earth until our days come to a close. Lord, may you just be with us, guide us, and bring us peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Taylor. Please stand as we close our worship service.
Church, may you go in love this week and be the church. You're dismissed. <laughs>